Okay, that's enough. I don't want to explode. Oh! <laughs> oh no! So my days are looking a little bit different right now. What did we mix? What two states? Well, we mixed vinegar. Which is a? Um, liquid and baking soda is a salt. And when that liquid and solid came together, what did it make? It made just a uh, liquid. Nope. What did we say? Those two things make? Make carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, right. Well, I can't believe it. I know there's a lot of guys here watching that have been watching me since before I even had children. <laughs> Videos from back in those days. And now look at my little bustling family and my oldest has just started school and we've chosen to homeschool and I get the bulk of the privilege to handle that. My wife is back teaching full time at, at school and uh, we're just having a ball here. Now onto the content that most of you came here for and that is the leather work and sharpening. The finishing, the completion of the project that we started in my last video. If you haven't seen it yet, Go click the link there, head back to my channel page now and look at the video before this one. We built a, uh, a rat style tang knife for a client. Just a beautiful leather stacked handle with some really cool milling operations in there. I recommend you go see it. But we're building a sheath for that knife right now. Shout out to Les Brown playing on my phone there in the background. If you haven't watched Les Brown, go check him out. He's, uh, he's older now, but so much value. But we're just cutting out uh, some beautiful 7 ounce ledge, veg tan leather here. Cutting out my welt and gluing it in place. And we're fixing to make a real nice sheath. Of course it has to be up to par with the rest of this knife. As you can see here I'm using a pancake style design. Not a taco style sheath here. So this is a, a multi part. And we're laminating like you can see here that, that wedge in between. And I like using these uh, paper clips, these binder clips for my leather work. Just really nice if you're looking for a, for a quick tip to improve your leather work to make you a little faster, a little more proficient. They're super cheap. You can get, uh, I've got a whole box of them now and it just uh, really adds to the process. Now if you've seen the first video, you'll remember that we actually have pictures sent in by the client of what he wants this knife to replicate, his grandfather's knife. So that's what we're doing here. The, the setup that I'm using, the, the pancake style design, the strap retention you can see here are all brought over from that original design. And now on to stitching. And boy, I really don't stitch many sheaths anymore. My beautiful wife has taken over that job. It's been a big help. I just kind of deliver her batches of leather work. And she stitches them up when she's reading or, or watching a little TV at the end of the night or something like that in bed. And uh, they just come back to me all finished. And she does just a beautiful job, just as good or better as what I would do. And it frees up more time for me to, to do the knife work and the dirtier work. So it's just lovely partnership
Hope you enjoyed that leather craft segment. I know a few people said they also wanted to see sharpening. So I've got the stones wetting down there now. And we're going to put an edge on this thing. The last step before we send it off to the client. Now I just went ahead and soaked down this hand on oil just to make it a little more hydrophobic before we get around the water here just so it doesn't soak up a bunch of water and get in at the tang. So looking nice and rich there now. It's a better color, huh? It's getting a little dusty looking there. I hadn't treated it yet. Now I'm going to put it on the Kuramaku Blue Black 340 grit ceramic stone. Have a look here at the thickness of the blade. So that's the thick, actual thickness of the blade here. And that's no edge. This knife has never been sharpened. No edge established. So I get to pick the angle. I get to do it all here. These Kuramakus, or this stone, is supposed to be a splash and go, but I find it's a bit too thirsty for that. <coughs> so I'm going to work the stone pretty hard here now, work the knife pretty hard on the stone, because we've got a little bit of steel to remove to establish a grind, what we'll call the factory grind, the initial grind set this knife up so hopefully the client can have a lifetime of successful sharpening with his knife so quick wipe down and I'm inspecting it there's a couple parts where I've already started to reach an apex not quite there up around the up around the belly here not quite there right back near the spine or near the near the handle, sorry. Now after checking my knife again, I see I have a pretty even level of sharpness. I have an apex all the way along my edge. So now I'll switch to the full passes like this. Still use a nice bit of pressure yet, but I'll start my lightening up process. Single cutting strokes and I'll help I'll start reducing my uh, burr that's left there. And we'll have just a, a beautiful edge. A really nice edge right off of this stone. Certainly one that you could go and put into field work, no problem. Good quality ceramic stone like this. Mid 300 grits. Oh yeah. Getting real light on the pressure there now. Just about the weight of the knife. That's it for that stone. Most of you already know what this next step will be. And that is Shapton Glass Stone 1000. My very favorite stone. Using a Nanawa 600 grit Nagura dressing stone here to resurface, quickly resurface my Shapton. And this is actually going to be the last stone in this set here. I have no need to go any higher than this with this knife. This will produce a beautiful edge, even glimmering a little bit of light. If you do a good job with this stone, man, it is a, a beautiful, high-performing edge. As much as you'll ever need for most uses. So I'm back to forward and back strokes. Working different parts of the blade. A little emphasis here. A little emphasis out there. And then I'll switch over. And my goal here is to remove all the scratches from the previous stone. Establish all 1,000 grit scratches. Now I'll move to the single cutting strokes like this. Start lightening up my pressure slightly. Honestly, guys, I'm not a big, a big believer in getting bogged down in the technicals. I am not 
a guided sharpening system, you're not going to hold your angle perfectly. I have, uh, you know, sometimes I have guys tell me they, they're they sending in their knife for sharpening. They want it sharpened at 21 degrees. I don't hold 21 degrees. I hold a knife to about what it should be for the thickness of steel, the type of steel. You kind of get a knack for it, but I don't get bogged down in this. A lot of that silliness like some people get carried away with. Because in most cases, it's all meaningless. You spend, uh, invest an hour, hour and a half, getting your hunting knife just absolutely that exact 19.5 degrees and polished to 6,000, strapped. Then you get to a moose and you make your first four or five cuts and that edge is <laughs> dwindling away. Your work has been undone. Then the first thing you got to do is grab a ceramic hone or a little field stone. That's maybe 800 grit. And tear off all the hour and a half of work you wasted. Very light here now. But let me know what you think of that concept. That's my, uh, my belief, my standard. Very light pressure. Now let's check our edge. Finish up with a clean stone. Nice, light, cutting stroke passes. We'll just do a few, maybe 10 per side. Just an estimate I always give. Again, I don't get bogged down in counting strokes and all this stuff. Just not that important. And I say that in almost every video to try to take off the intimidation for you guys. To say that you don't need to be intimidated. You don't need the stars to align. You just need to remove steel until you create an edge. And there are kind of more refined ways to do that. and With experience you can get a little better. You get faster at it. You produce better results. You produce an edge that lasts a little longer. But you're always doing just the, the same kind of thing. You're removing steel. Create a good edge. I'm going to call that off right there. Now one of everybody's favorite parts. The oiling, we need to get that leather a little darker too. And that lighting on the camera right now is doing something weird. It's much more maroon, dark in person. That's about what I'm looking at there. Not cherry red. <laughs> Sometimes the camera does funny stuff like that. And that's it for this little mini build series guys. I really hope you enjoyed seeing how I designed this knife, seeing all the finishes and the fit, the final fit up there. And this knife is ready to be shipped out to the client. I hope he enjoys it and I hope he gets just as long or longer out of it than they have out of his grandfather's knife. Again, if you're looking for the context to the story, if you're looking at seeing the knife being built, go check out video part number one which I'll link here now. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe if it's your first time here. Make sure you leave me a comment. All this stuff helps the channel grow. I hope to see you in the comment section of my next video.